clock. Here we go. Because the run home just got a little bumpy up. Rush, rush. You cannot be serious. I've got to see you every friggin' week. There's got to be an investigation into this. <laughs> This is the Triple M Rush Hour with MG. And for the final time, the Rush Hour with MG and Liam. Don't say it's so well. You know what? Let's celebrate today. It's uh, been an amazing four years with you, my friend. Mm. We come together as a yin and yang. We walk away as a yin together. Ah, I like that. I like that. Four years, over 700 shows. We've got plenty to celebrate on the show today. Uh, what, 700 shows. No, over 700 shows. What, what are they going to do with this opener? Because I feel like this no, opener... That's I mean, ours. No, that goes down with us. Well, no either, one takes that or, either that or the Radio Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah, no one takes gets, our opener. No. Gets, we, we, we thought this way out. We put it together. We wanted a bit of this. We wanted a bit of that. Eric Remember Stewart. we changed it? Yeah, we did. We, uh, for, a, year for one week. For a week. Our second year. And you said, we got we got to change the opener back. Yeah. What are we doing? This is, we're synonymous <laughs> with this. Pop Fiction. But yeah, let's go. Let's go. Their let's last go. show. Let's rock and roll, baby. We're going to have some fun. We're going to get some predictions. And of course, we're going to say some thank yous as well. This is the Rush Hour with MJ and Liam on Triple M. What's cracking? What's cracking is that we're cracking off. We're cracking off, baby. We're cracking off after nearly close to 750 shows and four years of fun. Uh, we're calling it a day. We're, hot. we're passing the baton on mm. to, to Gussie, to Jude, and to Wendell. Um, you're heading north. So Brizzy, with your fam, uh, we don't know what you're going to be doing, but you're going to be doing Watch something. Watch your space. Watch your space, and uh, I'm off to Brecky Radio next year. So it's all happening. Let's, you, let's enjoy today's show like there is no other, because there is no other. We call that an everybody win scenario. We call that an everybody win scenario. Uh, there's going to be lots of fun to be had in 2022, but MG for now, let's have a little bit of a look back over the past four years. It is the Rush Hour with MG. My name is Liam Flanagan, and the big fella is here in the studio, ready for the first edition of his very own show, MG Welcome. Well, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Finally, Sydney has its own sports show, and I'm so proud to be a part of that. First of all, let's get things straight here. I love a, a nickname. Mm. Um, You'll be my Kid Dynamite because oh. you're my – I'm Batman, uh, you're Robin. Um, but you've called me Kid Dynamite. Yeah. That's, that's what my mum always wanted me to be called, so sweet. You know how random I am. We've got to talk Parramatta Eels next. One triple three five three Parramatta. One triple three five three Parramatta. I've forgotten how to say Parramatta. It's Parramatta, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you. We've got to talk e- – what am I trying to say? Here we go. All right, one triple three – we got to talk Parramatta Eels up next. Pa- <laughs> Do not turn that into a f- video. What do you regret more, the headband look or the missed high five in State of Origin? <laughs> <laughs> hey, these great, I'm getting hammered here. Oh, wow. They're into you. Probably the headband. I'll get hammered with a good call, Sharon, Lord Farquhar, the Paramount man over here. So, um, yeah, definitely the headband. It was a big regret in my life. Jake Chaboyevich. Game three, Blues win. The team's out on the ferry celebrating. If the ferry goes down, who's the last person when you get washed up on that desert island that you want sitting next to you? Jimmy Maloney for sure. James Maloney? <laughs> can't, can't listen to him talk all day. Oh my God, he doesn't shut up. Um, Jimmy Maloney probably talked me here off, I reckon. I'd probably kill him. But I think Jeff Horn's just going to oh, be... Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't rolling. <laughs> you wolfhead. <laughs> I'm press <laughs> cord. Coach ever ask you to leave track? Once. Feel good? Oh, yeah. Politely? No. <laughs> and he just kept going over what I've done wrong, and I said, what, what, what are you trying to do? He said, don't want you to f off. I said, no, you f off. <laughs> and I got up, and he got up, and I went, oh, here we go. Oh. I'm going to fight the coach. <laughs> Jay Sean Tay. Jay Sean Tay, you are a, a great man, yeah. and uh, we appreciate you taking the Vegemite yeah. test, my friend. This one's for ScoMo. Yeah. Shout out to ScoMo. You know? Oh, that's nasty. I'm not a fan. It, it kind of stings. You guys eat this? There's a movement or an organization in the sporting world that's lost the plot. And it's the Olympics. The Olympics have lost the plot. Come on, man. <laughs> because they're including in 2024 break dancing. Come on, man. I'll say it again. On, I'll say it again. Break dancing. Go on, man. But I suppose, Liam, the, the biggest pat in the back has to go to our, our listeners. Absolutely. Um, our podcasters, our listeners, we would not sit here every day and we love our jobs mm. so much. We love it, love it, love it, love it. 
But without you listening to us, we don't have a job. Absolutely right. And it's been a magnificent year. You've supported us all the way. We've had a lot of fun. I want a little bit of Patrick Hernandez to show us. As we bid bon voyage, as we say, stay safe. He's Liam. I'm MG. Wherever you are over Christmas, stay random. Yeah. Oh. Hey, hey, I've got a tear in my eye. That's awesome. That's awesome. Makes it seem like we swore <sighs> a bit. <sighs> no, there's a lot of in and out takes, wasn't there? Yeah, we <laughs> stuffed up a lot. And thank you to Charlie for your editing and editing abilities. But I'm stuffing up again. I'm honestly got a little bit sad listening to all that because we've done a lot in four years and we've spoken to some fantastic people. We've had a lot of fun. We've spoken to some amazing guests and I think you and I have, uh, you've, you've made some very, very big predictions and very big statements around the game of rugby league and you've had trouble with, you know, words over two syllables. God, I, I am stuffed <laughs> with words over two syllables. Compound words they're called. Do you know that? Like footloose yeah, is, is footloose is a compound word. Luffle, luckily, <laughs> ah, luckily, luckily you, you ca- you're catching my disease. Luckily, compound is only a two syllable word. Yes. Hey, uh, <laughs> uh, thank you to uh, producer Charlie and Digital Tony ah, for putting that package together. Awesome boys and Maddie Haywood as well. I will say there is also a video that if people want to check out on our socials at Rush Hour Triple M. You can have a look at the video uh, to see the uh, the visuals and the images that accompanied all those highlights over the last four years. <laughs> we are going to be a little bit more nostalgic, MG. Uh, we got the final ever game of Blankety Blanks on the show before I assume it moves in and becomes a staple of the breakfast show yeah. next year. Oh, yes, baby. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm nicking that one. Uh, producer Charlie will be joining us very shortly. Uh, we've got some more thank yous to do as well. And I've been told by producer Charlie that we've got some special messages oh. that have been sent through as well. So Fantastic. We'll get to those shortly. But... Final ever show, MG. So this is, I'm giving you permission to, to free the arms. Yeah. Swing for the fences here. Okay. I'm going to get some predictions out of you. Oh, 22. For the 2022 NRL season. Let's do it. Who wins? What's the grand final and who wins? <sighs> Penrith go back to back. <laughs> you know they do. Um, they... In four years, he has never tipped against the Panthers. And I, I won't. In any format. Especially since my son's playing for them. I'm oh, like, you've got a vest. Well, conflict of interest now. He mightn't play first grade, but um, I think they're going to play the Roosters in the grand final. The Roosters? I think they're going to bounce back with a vengeance. Yeah. That but would be incredible. I think they're going to bounce back, and these young guys like Suwali and Walker are going to go next level. and Take a leap. Uh, Victor Radley, I think, will play Origin. Um, so I think... It's, it's not suspended. Yeah, so Victor, come on, mate. Curb your, <laughs> curb your enthusiasm, my friend. <laughs> All right, so it's a Roosters-Panthers grand yeah. final. What about a Dally M? Stellium winner of the year, I think, will be someone like Luke Keary. Luke Keary bounces yeah. back. Yeah. Actually, that's a good prediction because if the Roosters are going to get to a grand final, Him or Joey Manu. Keary's got to be massive. Yeah. Oh, gee, I forget that they held on to Joey Manu. Massive, to, yeah. And uh, you watch this. By the time the grand final rolls around next year, somehow they'll have landed Brandon Smith in oh. the middle of the season. And Anyway. Uh, all right. Luke Keary for Dallium. I like that. Give me a team that's going to rise in 2022. Oh, look. I think it's going to be the Broncos. I think the Broncos and the Dragons, everyone's discounting the Dragons. I think they're going to – they'll make the eight. That's my bold prediction for the year. Bold prediction? Dragons, dragons to make the eight. Yeah, Dragons to make the eight. Against all the odds, against you know the Hooks money ball scenario is going to work, yeah. I think. Money ball works yeah, for, but, for but the I think I think the Broncos are going to have a stellar year as well, and um, Kevy Walters' name won't be mentioned once about being sacked. I'd love that. Yep. I'd love that because I think not only as a bloke, but as a coach, he deserves that clean air to operate in. Mm. And I agree. I think Adam Reynolds is – I think the <laughs> South fans so, are going to realise – not they already love the bloke. He's a, he's a legend of the club, but they're going to realise just how special he was yep. with what he can do for the Exactly Broncos what they needed. Year. Yep. What about a team – and we don't. We've never trended too negative on this show. But what yeah. about a team that might slip a little bit? Well, they made the eight this year, the Newcastle Knights, um, but all the innuendo and rumour of Caelan Ponga maybe going to the Dolphins and Ooh. Mitchell Pearce leaving, it might take a year to get over Mitchell's loss. So I think maybe, I don't think they'll drop much, but I think the Knights might be around 10th or something, might just drop out of the okay, eight. Okay, a little bit of a slip there, yeah, especially yeah. because uh, Caelan Ponga has said, I'm not, I'm not playing halves. Yeah. I yeah. want to play fullback. So we're getting mixed, mixed messages from the Nova Castrians. So who do, who do you put alongside Clifford? 
if they don't land drink water or books well, yeah, or someone else. Exactly right. Maybe a Tex Hoy or something, mm. fabricate one. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, you look back on their season, I think it's a fair prediction given what Mitchell Pierce did for them when he was fit and firing. All right. The, the Knights to have a little bit of a slide. A little bit of a dip. Yeah. What about a player? Pick out a player to make a jump. I, uh, The Josh Schuster bandwagon. Let's not forget who pushed out of that down the hill at the beginning of last year. It was you, MG. This kid called Luke Metcalf, the next superstar of the game. The Warriors have got him, and the Warriors, again, this word agitate, are trying an agitate a wor- an early release from the from the Sharkies, mm. and, and rightly so, the Sharkies don't want to lose him because this kid, I think, is the next superstar. Um, I think he will be fantastic for the Sharks. He'll be a regular first grader, and the Warriors will say, thank God, he's a bit like the dogs did with Matt Burton. I'll say, thank God we've got him. Yeah, and probably got him for unders too. Big time. I Just quickly... I'll throw in the Sharkies in there. After speaking to Wade Graham on the show yeah. yesterday, I completely forgot about Cam McInnes. Yeah. And you talk about Finucane and Hines and, yeah. and Cam McInnes. He's and, got 12 months off. He's going to be itching. Wade Graham. Yeah. Let's not – Wade Graham, I think he's, people forget just how bloody good that bloke is. One of the best second roles in the game. On the paddock. Can you give me a, a – You've Luke Metcalf, you've declared him. I like it. Is there someone you think might – be in Freddie's frame this year for the Blues? Well, there's two second roles that I love. Um, Callum Matungi from South Sydney, you talk mm. Manu, and I think Matt Burton will be a regular in Origin this year as well. Matt Burton fighting yeah. for a centre spot. Yeah, I think he'll be in the centres. Oh, I tell you what, I'm just thinking, you know, you got Tur- don't forget, don't forget uh, uh, Latrell's Luttrell, back. Latrell, <laughs> Turbo, Teddy, oh, the Fox, oh. the strike power. At he the might be the 14, Matty Burton. Great 14. Great 14. Well, oh, don't forget Luke Keary as well. Luke Ke- <sighs> Come on, Freddie. New three South three nil, baby. Three nil. <laughs> three nil. New South Wales. How good. Oh, he's put the Kleenex down and he's come wandering into the studio, MG. <sighs> Producer Charlie <sighs> joins us. Look at the way, look, How are you look boys? At the way our, our, our boys prospered over the I years. Know, hasn't he grown? We had um, young Tommy Birmingham on the show for a, a, what, a year. Well, not even that. So Producer then, Charlie tells me Charlie he was just, here for about two months. And then Charlie white ended him and come in yeah, and just now. Backstabbed him. Now and, look at you. And look, and let's, let's be honest about it. Yeah. When he came to us. Couldn't have produced his way out of a paper bag. <laughs> I'd never done it before. Exa- no, yeah, oh, yeah. oh, we I knew. Was, I was around the office. And we the boss knew. Said, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? Yeah. I don't know. Could hand out a <laughs> could hand out a great icy cold can of coke yeah. or a sticker on the street, but, but but now he's he's become the guru. In, if we're honest about things, MJ, the show would not go to where no. most days. <laughs> no, <laughs> Charlie, you've been an Charlie. enormous part of our show. You and Tony Soprano, mm. Digital Tony, we love Tony and what you do for our show. Has been enormous, mate. We're going to miss you, but we won't be uh, missed for long because we'll no. still be around the same studio. He's together. basically the boss of Triple M NRL anyway. Yeah, now, so he's, he's, he's in charge of stuff. But for the final time on the Rush Hour with MG and Liam. Before it becomes the property of the Triple M Breakfast Show next year, Blankety Blanks, producer Charlie has sporting sentences with blanks in them that we need to fill in. Over to you, Charles. Last show, boys, so I want to know, Blank was the best event we ever did. Oh, we've done a lot. I think Tough Mudder. Oh, Tough oh, Mudder. That was, that was awesome. awesome. What a was, day. That was awesome. The way we all, like, we didn't know what to expect. We got up there, we were fish out of water, and we helped each other through obstacles and, and got muddy as all shit. <laughs> <laughs> Then they had a shower, and then they had a couple of beers and come back oh. to the pub at the Civic. Yes. That, for me, was the best. That was a great event. We, The three of us yep. and Digital Tony, you'd reckon we'd played a State oh. of Origin game. We look like Norm Proven <laughs> and Arthur <laughs> Summons. <laughs> uh, for mine, it was an event we did in the first year, the very first year, the MGC. Oh, my oh. joint. For the, yeah. When we went out to the compound for State of Origin game one, I think it was, in 2018. Yeah, it was. Uh, the game was being played at the MCG. That's that's right, yeah. and and listeners won the chance to come out to your house. How good! And we picked them up from the train station, yep. wheeled them in. We yep. had them blindfolded, so they didn't know where you lived. <laughs> I know. And then we sat around, <laughs> sat around the fire till the wee hours of the morning. We broadcast our show that we night did. from there. We did and the then show we, from your house. We watched the game, and that was a corker. I that, mean, I loved. I also loved the, the game of touch footy on Banquet oh, Stadium, yeah. where we the semi. Intoxicated oh, Ryan Girdler. Yeah. <laughs> and the rooftop. Timing young people. The, roof, oh, the rooftop of grand final edition. There's yeah. been a lot of great events. Yeah. Uh, boys, the key to Australia dominating the Ashes is blank. I think it's David Warner. I think I think d- what he did in, in the T20 World Cup, he, sh- he reminded everybody how damaging he is in that format. And he loves Aussie wickets. And I think if he can come out and score 
two centuries, or at least one century in the first uh, first three innings that he plays. I think that'll get his confidence back, his aggression back, and we'll have England on the back foot from the get-go. I agree with that, but for Warner to do that, he needs his partner at the other end doing the same Ooh. thing. So I think it's Marcus Harris. I think Marcus Harris needs to be just as good as Warner because if you don't have an opening partnership that's solid and getting at least 50 runs uh, in the opening partnership, they're going to have the ascendancy of the Englishman. And you're just you're just all excited that it's two left-handers batting as well, right. aren't you? I'm a right-handed batsman. What? Left-hand bowler, right-handed batsman. How have we got to the final show of the year and I've learnt a new fact about you? You're weird. Anyway. My dad's the same, actually. Bowls left-handed no, no bats right. I'm your dad. This is not yeah. the rush out. This is not Charlie, the rush out with Charlie's this dad. This is your life. I'm your dad, mate. <laughs> uh, a lot of big contracts going out the last couple of days, boys. So I want to know, Blank is the most undervalued NRL player. <sighs> well, it was... Isaiah Papalihi, mm. but he's since been paid his, his comeuppance. Um, oh, look, I don't know. I can't think of the top of my head who's been... Undervalued. Re- yes. Um, uh, well, I would argue Joey Manu's taken unders yeah. to stay at the Roosters. I think what hey, what, what, what the war oh, I think what the Warriors were offering him was closer to fair market value for Manu for what he can deliver. Mm. Yeah, well, I think I think someone like Dylan Edwards has got to probably take unders at the moment because of all the the Panthers who are cool. vacating the premises mm. because of the salary cap, and obviously when you win a comp, you're going to get handpicked um, from other clubs. So I think maybe Dylan Edwards I like it. Paul Gallen's next fight should be with Blank. SBW. He was fantastic on our show recently. He was almost made our top five as guests, to be honest. But I think that's the one we all want to see. We you know we see that. Um, Barry Hall's injured himself um, in a stunt from SAS that he's filming uh, a la what uh, Sammy Burgess did. Um, and I think the next fight should be Sonny Bill Williams and Paul Gallon, maybe February next year. Bit of a whisper about Sonny Bill. Spotted uh, in Coogee yesterday uh, by my brother at one of those um, recovery type joints. The, you know, the oh, yeah, sore the, and the spa. The, the flotation the tanks yeah, and stuff. Yeah, all that sort of yeah, yeah. Uh, Just hanging out with... Uh, a certain Dustin Martin from the oh, Richmond Tigers. Their Jesus. bromance continues. Wow. So Sonny Bill and Dusty just continuing that relationship, elite athletes. For mine, look, I, I agree with MG. I'd love to see the SPW. But to throw an alternative there for Gout, I think we set up a, 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 a like, you know, a Royal Rumble type fight for him <laughs> where you get Josh Alloy and you get a bunch of other big boppers who reckon they can Lay throw him up. and they tag in for a yeah, round. Just, <laughs> just tag it in. For four, six rounds, six Six boxes. rounds, six different heavyweights, yep. six different front rowers from the NRL. I love so it. Get, wow. Have a go. That'd have a go. A, no that one's would gonna be want, awesome. No one's going to want Gow in the first round. No. No, the sixth round. Why <laughs> do I mean, wouldn't want him in the sixth no, round the, either. The only chance you've got of beating Gow is in the first round. If you, go <laughs> when any, he's not any, warmed up. Yeah, any further than one round, he's, he's, gonna, he's like the, board, the beast at you. All right, finally, boys, the rush hour with MG and Liam has been blank. Tremendous. Oh. Exhilarating. Life-changing. It's <laughs> f***ing awesome. All, all those things. It's been fun. It's been fun. We've had a lot of bloody fun over these yeah. four years. Yeah, once we found our mojo over the first you know, six weeks or so, we've just settled into a routine that we've found, and it's, it's you know, we've made people, and we've been told by people who are driving home in their cars and make them smile. It's been a lot of fun. What's it been for you, Charlie? Mate, it's been very fun. I've learned a lot. You two, working with you two every day has just been amazing. You know, it's been the highlight for me. Honestly, like the team we have, you know, yep. you, you wouldn't change anything about it. You guys are a pleasure to work with every day, and I've enjoyed, you know, every minute of it. Good on you, Chucky. Oh, well done, Charles. Time to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. We're done. Turn my microphone on. There we go. Nothing changes. After 750 shows, you still fail to turn my microphone on at the right time. I was about to have a little tear in my eye, but Uh, yeah, this is it. And Charlie and Tony are in the studio with us to say goodbye. Charlie, what have you got for us, my man? Oh, well, boys, when we found out that you guys coming off air, we were obviously inundated with a lot of messages of support from the friends of the show, the best friends of the show, and they've sent us in a few messages. Thank you for being a friend. It's Ryan Girdler here. MG, Liam, and let's not forget Charlie. Put himself on air quite a bit at the end. <laughs> Boys, congratulations. What a fantastic four years uh, you've put together. Can't believe it's over. Can't believe you're moving on. Uh, my favourite part of the week is just coming in on a Thursday afternoon, having a chat before Thursday night footy. So thanks for allowing me to play just a little part, delivering the facts to the people of Sydney five days a week. You've done an amazing job. So 
onward and upward, boys, and of course, stay random as always. <laughs> G'day, Liam. G'day, MG. Gussie Warland here, mate. Uh, fantastic the last four years. How quickly has it flown by? And you guys just created something absolutely awesome. You know, congratulations. Had fantastic ratings, unbelievable downloads on your podcast. Two terrific blokes who everyone just love listening to on the way home. So, uh, lots of love. Next chapters for both of you will be absolutely awesome. I know that. So, lots of love to both of you. Congrats once again. And go the Chookies! MG, Flanners, Teeth Shaw here. Congratulations on the show over the last four years. And, and obviously, all good things come to an end. And, and like me, you, you've been delisted. <laughs> you to move on to bigger and better things. And to be brutally honest, unemployment life is pretty good. But yeah, if you need any advice, just give me a bell. Appreciate you having me on the show over the past few years. So good luck and good riddance. <laughs> Hey Liam, MG, Josh Morris here mate. Just want to congratulate you on the last four years. Really enjoyed listening to the show and being a part of it. I uh, wish you all the best for the future and if nothing pops up, more than welcome to come to Cattleman's Brewing Co, guys. <laughs> hey boys, Woodsy here. Can't believe your show's not going around again next year. MG and Liam, mate, absolutely champions. You know, every time that someone messaged me and asked if I wanted to jump on the rush hour, boys, I always loved doing it with you guys. You always made me feel part of it and, um, now, it's going to be sad to not really hear you guys in the afternoon anymore. You still get the EMG in the mornings, but can't help Liam that he wants to move up to the uh, terrible state of Queensland with the two headers. <laughs> but um, just want to wish your boys all the best, and thanks for looking after me in all the last couple of years of this show. Um, it's been awesome to be a part of it, and wish nothing but the best for you guys for your future, and, and hopefully we catch up for a beer down the track. Hey, MG and Liam, it's Tony Squires. Just wanted to say well done on a brilliant four years with the show. And radio years, of course, are the same as dog years. So that's like 28, if my maths is correct. That means Liam was about six when you started. You know, it doesn't matter. Well done on a great show. You know what? I'll miss that little odd couple. Go well. Oh. Wow, that brings a tear to your eye, doesn't it? It really does. It's, um, you forget how much and how many people we've had on the show as guests and, and friends of the show. And thank you for that. That's well nice. done, Charlie. Well done putting that together. Uh, and uh, yeah, if I think fair to say that if if you've thrown a pass or taken a hit up as a rugby league, a professional rugby league player in the past four years, we've had you on the show and we appreciate your time and we appreciate we few thank yous to the NRL mm. um, for all oh, the, yeah. all Big the time. love they've given us, all the teams, uh, New South Wales, Blues as well. Yep. Uh, everybody who's been prepared to come on the show and have some fun with us. And then internally, as we look around here, MG, we got producer Charlie and Digital Tony, the OGs of the Rush Hour, yep. uh, who've been such a huge part of the success of the show over the past four years. And then everybody else. Yes. I mean, you've got the audio producers, Matty Haywood and Sidey, all the great openers and, and musical puns that you've enjoyed putting together over the years have come courtesy of those two gentlemen. We've got the promotions team that have put together all those events in Bron and Kenny and Tim Dwyer and... Uh, over the years, and we had Laz in there for a stint as well. None of those events are possible without our promotions team. Uh, and more recently, we've had our new addition, uh, Digital Kate, yep. who's in here filming at the moment. Skinny mini, yep. <laughs> Just making sure none of us burst into tears. And then we got the decision makers that allowed us to, to yes. stick around. And uh, there was some, you know, I mean, the period where we were reading your autobiography on it. <laughs> yeah, through the first lockdown yeah. wasn't real promising, no, was it? I no. thought, where are we going with this? But we, <laughs> found our, we found our way. You were going to have to write another book. Yeah, well, I've already started. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> so to, to Jamie Angel in the beginning, to yep. Rex and Cool Man now, to Fitzy, the big boss, uh, everybody for having faith in the show over the years. Thank them. Yep. Uh, we've got other oh, techs. The techs. Yeah, they've been at my house a few times to help me with through lockdown and um, I ring them when there was a, there's a glitch, but they always fix it up and uh, no job too small for our, our, our team. Cam, Fruey, Dave, yep. Andrew, Adam, all those all those boys for making sure we stayed on air. Do our house bands over the years? Yes. Polish club, Wolf yep. Mother. Wolf Mother. Hands Like Houses. Yep. We've got anybody? Uh, probably, but that's... A... <laughs> well, this is it. Yep. Uh, you're going to be uh, flying in breakfast next year with Paige and Jess. Uh, you'll have Gus, Dell and Jude as you rush our family from 2022 onwards. One last time, MJ. Well, mainly a big thank you so much to our listeners, to everyone who turned on 104.9 at 6 p.m. each night and to download our, our podcast. We just can't thank you enough. Um, five, we just hit 5 million downloads yesterday, yeah. um, which is a nice little milestone for this little one-hour caboose. <laughs> um, and we want to thank you for it. 
from the bottom of our hearts. Um, for one last time, thank you so much for your ears. He's Charlie. He's Tony. He's Liam. I'm MG. I'm choking up. <laughs> Stay random. <laughs> wow. There it is. Well done, there it is.